Hi, Lauren here at the Richmond Community College Library. In this video, we are going to take a look at what sources of information we want to use for research projects here at RCC. First, we are going to define scholarly sources of information and peer review. Then we'll talk about some other types of sources that are useful and how we can evaluate whether or not we should include something in our research and our works cited page. If your instructor has asked you to include scholarly sources in your research, this means they want to see sources of information that have gone through the process of peer review. Peer review is part of what happens when a scholar wants to publish their work in an academic book or journal. When that happens, other experts in the field will go over their work to make sure that it is accurate, useful, and will advance knowledge in that area of study. If the experts do not think that the work is good enough, it will be sent back to the author for revision or rejected altogether. If something is published and later found out to be untrue or that some crucial information is missing, that work will be retracted and a statement will be put out in the journal that published it. This is pretty common and is one mechanism that scholars and publishers use to keep themselves accountable and credible. For scholars working at universities and research institutions, publishing is a lifeline and necessary for their career. When other scholars cite someone's work, it builds the reputation of that author and if you see someone being cited often or a particular article being cited often, this is a measure of the influence or clout of that researcher or piece of work. In this manner, we can view scholarly work as a conversation. And this is the conversation that your instructor wants you to listen in on and tell them what you think through your writing. This is also one reason why it is important to cite your sources. By citing your sources, you are not only giving credit to the hardworking researchers, but you are giving your own arguments credibility. So how do we know if a source of information is scholarly or if it has gone through peer review? If you are searching within a library database, like the ProQuest Science Database, uh, it's pretty easy. When you are conducting a search, you can select to only bring up peer-reviewed sources of information. You can also look at a particular journal to verify that it is peer-reviewed. Let's take a look at the first hit. So this is an article. We can click through here and click through to the title of the journal and we'll get a little bit of information about it such as whether or not it is peer-reviewed. If you are working outside of the library's resources you can still easily find information on a publication. So you could just look something up. The New England Journal of Medicine uh, is a pretty big name in uh, medical research. Let's go to their website. And here we're looking for an about section of their website, about page. And if we scroll down to the bottom, here it is about the New England Journal of Medicine. And we can read that they publish peer reviewed research. Sometimes, however, sources of information that have not been peer-reviewed are useful and appropriate for us to use. If you need to cite uh, hard facts about a recent event, a news source will do just fine. Be careful, though, because news outlets publish opinion pieces, too. And unless your paper is about media or public perception, you probably do not want to include a pundit's opinion in your works cited page. Government agencies, such as the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, non-government agencies like the World Health Organization, and research groups like the Institute for Policy and Research, uh, all produce credible authoritative data. A good way to 
judge the credibility of a source of information are whether or not the methods for gathering data are disclosed and if they're upfront about that, and whether or not an organization uh, clearly states its mission and goals. Whether a source of information makes us feel good or reinforces previously held beliefs is not a good way to determine whether or not information is credible. So here we are at the Institute for Policy Research and we have a story about the vaccination rates against COVID-19 for healthcare workers. Let's check out the story. If we go down, we can see that it's pulling some numbers and it's referencing a survey, which is linked. Uh, so let's go to that survey to look at where those numbers come from. So here we have the uh, original work where um, that information is published. This is the original research. And if we scroll down, we will find a statement about the methodology, about how uh, that data was um, procured and where they got those numbers from. So this article is being very upfront about the methodology researchers used to come up with the numbers that were cited uh, in that report. Um, if we go back to the Institute for Policy and Research, we should be able to find that about page, you know, something similar to that, okay, who we are. And here we have a clearly uh, stated mission. So we can read what the goals of uh, the Institute for Policy Research are, and they're very upfront about that. So when selecting sources of information, we need to think critically about whether they are appropriate for our needs, whether the creator is an authority on any given subject, and whether or not we need to be aware of biases or other motivations. If someone is trying to sell you something, it's a good idea to look at a few other sources on that topic. We need to be aware that there is incorrect, misleading, and outdated stuff out there. But by being open to changing our mind if we learn something new, reading up on a topic from multiple sources, including ones we might initially disagree with, and using uh, our best judgment, we can recognize, acknowledge, and mitigate bias and keep from falling for misinformation. And if you need help finding sources to cite in your Works Cited page, or if you're having a hard time getting started on your research, uh, you can always get in touch with one of the librarians here at Richmond Community College. Uh, this is our, the library's homepage, and under Contact Us, you will find our email address, uh, phone numbers, and you can see our open hours right here. All right, thanks for watching.